look, it's an inflection point in Salesforce's history and world history, and I have to ask you about what's going on in Ukraine and geopolitics right now. How concerned are you about what this means for humanity and the global economy and business? Well, I, I want to start where, where you just started, which is humanity. Um, our hearts go out to the people of Ukraine. Uh, watching this suffering uh, play out in real time in the media is just horrific. And uh, while we at Salesforce don't really have a presence in the region like everyone, we're trying to show up as humanitarians to help the suffering of the Ukrainian people and all the refugees in the region. Um, speaking to the economic uh, impact, you know, uh, we're, there's a lot of uncertainty in the economy right now. Uh, this war in Europe, which is horrific, inflation, the supply chain crisis, um, despite all of that, the, the one thing that's enduring is it really investment in digital technologies. Uh, the acceleration, acceleration of the digitization of the economy that started by the pandemic really continues sort of full speed ahead. Um, and you really saw that in our, our record performance this past year, which we're so grateful for uh, in the face of all this disruption, which is why we uh, beat our Q4 guidance, raised our guidance for next year. And we just continue to see momentum in, in all aspects of our business. We've seen a number of companies self-sanctioning, Apple, uh, Netflix to a certain extent, Ford. Is that something that Salesforce is considering in the moment when it comes to Russia? Uh, well, as I mentioned, Emily, we don't really have a presence in the region. We've never had an office there. We don't have employees there. We don't have a material business there. Um, so our focus has actually really been on how can we use our business as a platform for change? Um, we made a $1 million grant to help uh, with the refugee crisis and help ease the suffering of the Ukrainian people. Uh, I've been really heartened to see so many Salesforce employees show up and ask how they can help. We have a number of employees with families in the region. We're really trying to help out all of the Salesforce family uh, in a time of global crisis and uh, really trying to have the humility to understand what can we do to play our part in this humanitarian crisis. Now, I know you had a strong quarter. M&A has been a key strategy to drive growth. You were the chief architect of this Slack acquisition, and I know you've ruled out material M&A for the near future, but could the changing global dynamic change that strategy? Could you be open to it? Uh, you know, honestly, we're not interested in material M&A in the near term, and it's because we're so excited about Slack. You know, we spent the past two years with this global pandemic in different stages of the world, keeping people in their home offices and keeping people away from their offices. Coming out of this pandemic, as people reconnect, this idea that every company needs a digital headquarters to connect their employees and their partners, because we are going to be working from anywhere. And uh, I think that's incredibly exciting. Um, you saw it in just the incredible momentum of the Slack business uh, this past quarter. Uh, Slack actually grew their $100,000 customers 46% year over year this quarter. We see such great momentum. That's really my focus, and that's the focus of the management team. Now, I know you were listening to the segment earlier. You are also the chair of Twitter's board. The subject of misinformation and how big tech companies are handling it uh, has been a very big topic. How do you think Twitter is handling Russian dis and misinformation? What more do you think platforms like Twitter and Facebook and TikTok can do? Well, first, I just want to express my confidence in Prague, the new CEO of Twitter and the Twitter management team and helping the company navigate this crisis. Um, as your previous guest alluded to, these are some of the most complex and sophisticated problems any technology company is facing right now. Um, I think it's also shown the importance of Twitter as a platform for public conversation as so much of this plays out on the platform. Um, so I know these are incredibly complex and nuanced issues. I really enjoyed the previous segment. And what I can say is I just have faith in Prague and the management team of Twitter and helping the company navigate this on behalf of all Twitter stakeholders. Now, last quick question. Look, Salesforce shares are down from a high in November. Why do you think there's this disconnect between the optimism I hear from you and that I hear from Mark and the stock price? You know, we just put up the best year in our company's history, the best quarter, raise our guidance for this year. I could not be more excited about the future of Salesforce's business. Uh, really across all parts of our portfolio, uh, we're 20, turning 23 years old next week. Our sales cloud grew 17% this year at over $6 billion revenue run rate. Slack is doing well. Our organic and inorganic investments have been, never been doing better. And as you know, um, the, I think the stock price will follow. Uh, we know we uh, you know, show up for our customers, um, drive performance for the company, show up for all of our stakeholders. Uh, we believe in the long run our stock price will follow.